three of the second season of the SBL is finally here and Playmore is taking on the Philadelphia Feroes, coached by Chimpak, someone I've played before. He's an incredible battler, but this is a must win game, Tyler. It doesn't matter how good our opposing coach is. It doesn't matter how good the opposing team is. We just got embarrassed at the swamp by the defending champs. Things have to change, and I'm starting with the suit. We're back to the old suit, and somehow, some way, this will help. John, I've changed the outfit as well. I felt like it was necessary to pull out the haters wanted shirt. We're looking for them. You want to be on the opposite side of this team after one devastating loss, feel free, but don't hop back on the bandwagon after we get things going again today with a win. I'm, I'm lying. We'll certainly take you back on the play more bandwagon, but John, it's going to be tough because this is another good opponent that we're facing, not just in terms of the coach, but the Pokemon on the other side, too. It's going to be interesting to see how Ben thinks he's going to deal with this team and ideally defeat the team. So that being said, let's find out how he's going to do it. Ben, take it away. First, we have our other Terra captain making their debut this week with the Suing and Electrode. We're rocking Leaf Storm, Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, and Taunt with the Life Orb. Taunt just helps us limit any sort of setup by anything slower than us or limiting the hazards that might go on the field because, spoiler alert, we're not bringing removal this week. Next, we have the MVP, Iron Valiant. This is the first Pokemon I threw on the team. It is holding the Choice Specs, and this is a menace for Chimpak's team. We have Moonblast, Aura Sphere, Thunderbolt, and Vacuum Wave. Vacuum Wave is actually amazing Choice Specs priority this week, while Moonblast is absolutely free versus their team in the early game. We have to be careful in the late game to not let Rubber Room set up for free because we lock ourselves into Moonblast as it's a four time resist before Terror with Rubber Room. Chomp is back and unfortunately still has to be slightly defensive. Uh, We're running Stealth Rocks, Earthquake, Stone Edge, and Dragon Tail with the Lumberry. In general, Earthquake is pretty nice for his 13 just for a little extra chip, but Stone Edge is very important for us to get off heavy damage versus the Torn T in case it is a bulky set, or if we're trying to punish any free like nasty plot setup on their side as well. Finish the monster trio, we have Metagross with the Aquaberry once again. This is very offensive. I almost bought a choice band set, but we're bringing the Aquaberry to help us versus Heat Wave on Torn. Potential Terra Blast, Terra Fire from Rever Room. Aqua is just really good in this matchup and I can save it for a lot of potential um, things that I might be losing to in the late game. Earthquake helps us catch that Arcanine or Rever Room off guard. Rubber Room, of course, can tear in the grass and resist that, but if Arcanine tries to catch us with their Flare Blitz, we can eat that up and then Oko it with an EQ in return. Next, we have a very defensive Amoogus this week to help versus the likes of Iron Hands and Ting Lu. Uh, this is going to be very key for getting off some potential Rocky Helmet chip if we're not facing a Punching Glove Iron Hands while also being just great for spreading Toxic around on the team. Grass Knot, I've never seen such a great matchup for Grass Knot as Chimpak's team is very heavy between the likes of Dondozo, Iron Hands, um, Ting Lu, it's just so good there. Lastly, we're bringing our second Terra Captain in Glastrier for the third week in a row. I have a feeling this Pokemon is going to be our likely Terra option because it's just so good and is a great Tornadus T check with Terra Electric. So we're rocking Swords Dance, Icicle Crash, Terra Blast, and High Horsepower. I'm rocking Swords Dance purely in case we face a bulky setup Strength Sap Drift Limb. Don't want to lose to Strength Sap anymore. Haha. <laughs> While overall, the Bolt Beam coverage is basically, once again, all you need for a team. That's the squad. Let's do this one for Bubby. Oh, there he is, Tyler, in the brand new Play More shirt. The sponsor of the team, play-more.store. If you want to get your very own Play More shirt and look just like Coach Ben, do that right now. But that is a really interesting first Pokemon over on the GOATS team over there. Okay, Drifblim. I was telling you, Tyler, that's a Pokemon you can't sleep on with Unburden or even, what is it, Flare Boost? Pretty yeah, good it's abilities. the only Pokemon that has the ability Flare Boost. I'm going to be honest, before we were uh -huh. getting ready for this battle, I didn't know it existed. But apparently you can just slap a Flame Orb on this thing and boost your special attack. We'll see if that's what they do. We were also wondering uh, which mask they would put on the Ogre Pwn. They go with the Water Mask. We were talking about that earlier. It has Water Absorb. No, I think it's always... Defense. He's always the Water one. We don't have to worry oh, so about it, that. That draft yeah. is always Water. So, yep. again... The Ben's notes about this were bulky team that has amazing bulk. That was the first sentence and that he wrote about seeing. this team. And that's exactly what we're going up against. But no iron hands, Tyler, which is a really, really big deal here. It I is. 
I'm looking at all of the Pokemon. I feel like that's the only thing that's really shocking. I guess <laughs> Driplim instead of Dragonite, which is kind of funny to, to see. <laughs> that Driplim is more likely to, or a better sweeper for Chimpact over there than Dragonite. You wouldn't expect that. That's the beauty of Draft League, man. It's what keeps me coming back generation after generation. Ideally in this game, we watch that thing get absolutely creamed. It doesn't do anything cool. I want that thing popped on the side of the road maybe run over a few times i'll i'll leave that uh -huh. as it stands because right. that was brutal oh. hopefully the, the beat down play more is about to apply is equally brutal all right that's what i like to hear now i'm gonna be honest hand up uh, i made a i made a commenter faux pas or commentator faux pas i'm messing up my words as well didn't know what the lead is we were told it was going to be iron valiant but this is a Suian Electrode, and it's a fantastic lead for us. I love Worked the shiny out really as well. well. We were being boozled, but in this case, it's worked out perfectly. And this is one thing we've talked about, John. The, even this opening turn, you figure hmm. out from the jump who's going to be on their back foot, who's yep. having to be reactionary. Ben immediately has an advantage here. Yeah, I really, 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 really love this. As I feel like, especially last game, we were immediately on the back foot. You know, with the Iron Valiant, everything about that set should have allowed us to stay on the front foot. But now we can just get the Volt Switch damage and hopefully go into the appropriate Pokemon. I'm really shocked that uh, the opponent wanted to keep in Ogre Pond, but... Hey man, I've never played against this thing. I've seen it in draft. It's brand freaking new. It, it's hard to know exactly what to do here. Well, again, but I got the special <laughs> defense boost, so you're not too overly worried about any hit. You've got a feeling it can survive most things. That's a pretty big deal there. Even though it's not effective, we get rid of the choice specs. I think Ben was, uh, in the notes we saw this, I think he was probably expecting it to stay in and try to just go ahead and set up spikes. I anticipated once they stayed in, that's what we were going to see. Knock off a pretty big deal in that spot. Yeah, I mean, knock off's just a safe move to go for. We talked about Ogre Pond possibly just being, you know, an annoying Pokemon, maybe an offensive pivot. You know, obviously having that nice special defense is great, but I, I really question the, the play into the Iron Valley and obviously a prediction that did not work. But Choice Specs Iron Valiant is something that Ben was really excited about coming into this game. It's something that me and you were really, really hyped to see as it could just punch holes into the team. I am a little worried late game of what that's going to do. I mean, it's a very bulky team. As he said in his notes, uh, what, a lot of bulky Pokemon that are very bulky. <laughs> yes, that's what he said. I do want to correct myself. The Ogre hmm. Pone only gets that special defense boost if it terrastalizes. So on the other side of oh. me was thinking, they're not going to take They can't do that here. So wipe that he off the table. Me. Yeah, that was just a bold move, period, for them hmm. to stay in and take that hit. <laughs> Cards on the table. That was just a risk, and it, it's paid off as now we're kind of back here, John. It feels like we're back on square one. Yeah, no, I, I do like this matchup. I'm pretty sure the foul play is for uh, the Reva, the Reva Vroom over here. But it is, it just, these first few plays have kind of thrown me off a little bit as neither coach is doing what I'd really expect. You know, Ogre Bond staying in on this electric grass Pokemon to go for knockoff in its face. Ben's bringing in Iron Valiant, losing the choice specs. But now that we have Amoongus in, things settle down. That thing is getting switched out. But then why is this back? What am I missing? <laughs> he hates this, he hates this, this Pokemon. This has been a battle. I, I think he does. I, yeah. I, I was I was wrong about the boost normally just because to be honest and a lot of my perspective on this comes from playing the regular game when I'm using Ogre Pwn, mm. I terastalize that thing so I'm just used to having the boost on it yep. but that makes this even weirder it's just like a pseudo sacrifice maybe the belief here is the only purpose in this battle for Ogre Pwn is to get up the spikes never mind they're, they're switching it back out I, I don't know what's happening I you're too focused on the spikes and it's just, it's, I, I don't think we're ever going to be able to get into his mind until we watch nope. his side. And, you know, I, I think, honestly, I think Jimpack may just hate Ogre Pond. He's like, you know what? That kid this talked is, about ogres too many this times. This is for the kid. This is for Kieran. This is Kieran's revenge. <laughs> we're sacrificing it, which we'll take because, you know, we get a one-mon advantage. Cool. We'll ride with that one. <laughs> but now we're back to the normalcy because Tornadus T 
is a like it's a pretty reliant Pokemon, at least for a commentator like us. We know what that thing's gonna do. It's probably gonna be Assault Vest, or maybe it's got some boots on. It's gonna go for an attacking move or U-turn so it can get its regenerator boost. It is very interesting with our team. I don't think we have a fantastic switch in. Um and I guess we're going into the glass tree or just not sure exactly what's going to happen. This will be able to force it out and then be able to do a lot of damage to anything on the opponent's team. So, I hate that. That did a lot. <laughs> and that's something that you did not get to experience in your competitive days with this Pokemon. No, no, it is a brand new move. I uh, I did one time. Um, oh yeah, I lost a Wolfy VGC after I missed four or three Hurricanes and then a Power Whip. Uh, and then I'm pretty sure he drafted Tornado T in a future league and then beat me with it. So, I, like, bad guy. He's a great guy. I love him to death. But me, not oh, the battlefield. Oh, I thought we were talking about the tornadoes, Tornadus T. Like, that's the bad guy. They're both. They're a tandem. They're mean together. Tyler, we haven't said a lot about the battle. And I, the big reason for that, to, to get a little bit more serious, to get a little serial for you right here. Uh... I've really not understood a lot of the plays from both coaches. I, I feel like there's been some misplays on, on Ben's side. I really do not like that switch. I, I think the Metagross was the right switch every single time. I think he was worried about the knockoff. We've already switched to Pokemon. We didn't want to get knocked off in a knockoff. Now, like, too many things are happening. The Tornado is getting switched, and now, and now Metagross is against the Arc. It's, we're, we're up and down and left and right. At some point, someone's got to break through and do some big damage. The issue with all of these switches, and I'll be quiet in a second, is that we, we're not on the back foot, but we're definitely losing outs in all of these plays. Our team is getting whittled down little by little, and now we're forced to bring in Garchomp to get whittled down just a little bit more. No, and I, I think we're definitely on the, the back foot. I will go there, I'll make that statement. And John, I think this actually all boils down to the first turn. And I think that staying in with Ogre Pwn proved to be really, really smart. I don't think Ben either A, expected it to stay in, or B, I obviously don't think expected the knockoff. That completely shifted things from the start of this battle. Ben started on the front foot. We make what isn't a bad switch on, on paper out of the Volt switch, do some great damage, but the knockoff takes the specs off, and I think immediately from there, the game plan has to shift because every bit of damage you've calculated with Iron Valiant coming into the battle, that's out the window you immediately yep. lost your choice specs. Yeah, no, I, I really like all it, of that. It's been a switch fest since then. Yeah, and you know, I, I played Jimpact a few times. It, he's an incredible battler, one of the better that I've ever gone against. And you know, if we're getting into a battle of just switch, 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 prediction, 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 hey, Ben can go toe to toe with any battler out there. But our regenerator Pokemon is, a, it's a mushroom named Among Us. And Chimpax Regenerator Pokemon is Tornadus T. I really would like to see Little Offense try to break through, break through all of these switches. I love this play. It's what I wanted to see earlier when it was against, uh, or when he brought in the Glastrier. It, it, what's in the past is in the past. Let's just do the thing. And now I wonder if Ben tries to predict a switch on the other side, or if after that hit, this is when we get aggressive and try to make something happen on the offensive. Because really, John, this is the first opening we've had yep. since the first turn to, yep. to try and get some good damage, even off a switch. Metagross is a great attacking Pokemon. It's going to hit anything pretty hard, especially if it stays in and you get this ice punch. You're looking good. I mean, from what we saw, Metagross was brought just to be able to do a lot of damage to a lot of different Pokemon. Yes. Obviously with Torn T, you gotta be worried about the Regenerator. How much damage are you actually gonna be able to do? But it, if you're gonna I bring like in Metagross play. at this point, like it's going to be outsped. That's just a part of it. I love, love, love this. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for cheering for that Chimpact and Chimpact fans, but there was a lot of crits last game. They, they hurt yeah, my we, feelings. We, des we deserved it. You go back and look. Everyone, like four or five. Yeah, now, I, would they have changed things? Some of them, yes. Would that one have changed things? It's completely changed the course of this battle early on.
It absolutely has. The The city of Philadelphia is, is furious at us. It, absolutely furious. And it's not a city I want mad at me. I'm a little worried. I cheered a little too hard. But this is why everything we said, I mean, Ben... He knows what he's doing, of course, but we all linked up, all three of us on the same page. This whole Switch game, it's not benefiting our team. Right. It's hurt our team way more than it's hurt the opponent. We had to do something. And with everything the opponent's done, they were trying to just outplay us to a ridiculous level with Switch, 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 like this, that, the other, always making a prediction. Why don't you stop someone from making predictions? Just start playing as straightforward as possible. Yep. Some top players, Tyler, they get weirdly mean. You make the obvious play, which they don't think is the correct play. They'll, they'll say you're dumb and wrong. And that's sometimes that's how you beat the best players. You just make the most simple play, and they're playing at 70 chess. Can, can we admire the mm -hmm. two beautiful shinies on the field oh, right now? I just mm, chef's oh, kiss. It's you, incredible. Ben, ben just had to pull up the, you know the switch menu as we were trying to admire. Well, but here we. I mean, yeah. These are two great shinies. I just wanted to observe that. It's fascinating <laughs> now, John, for us to figure out. We were a little surprised to see Drift Blend. Hmm. How is it going to be used? I, I'm a little bit worried uh, uh, of this being like weakness policy, unburden, trying to outspeed. You see the Shadow Ball there. If we stay yeah. in Ice Punch, you know it lives. Shadow Ball just a. a obliterates the metagross i do like this switch like i don't love because if it is the unburdened weakness policy that i was worried about do we do we risk that you know it could be a different set maybe it's too early for that there's a lot that Driplim can do i mean we don't learn a ton from the shadow ball it, it's kind of hard for me to really predict yeah. exactly what we're going to see there but i do know what would be scariest an unburdened weakness policy <laughs> is terrifying Okay. Okay. Ooh, well, we don't yep. find out. Yeah. No, I, I like this a lot. Uh, and there's no Ting Lu, which is really, really nice. I yes. really, really love this recent string of plays from Ben. You know, most battles, we couldn't be more complimentary of the coach. And I honestly, hey, I haven't loved saying I didn't love a few of his plays. So I want to make sure that when he brings it back and he's making good play after good play, we say something. It's not easy to switch into your Life Orb Pokemon and take a hit, Tyler. You only got so many hits with Life Orb. I feel yep. like he executed that perfectly. He did. And now we're back on the front foot. We, we talked yep. about the importance of this over and over again. Being able to make proactive switches and not trying to constantly react to what's happening. Fascinated here. It looks like he's going in on the switch. Probably to Drip Limb if he goes with the Stone mm. Edge. Even if they did switch, could go Stealth Rock here to be safe? Obviously, yep. super, super aggressive play is Earthquake. I do think they switch into something. Could end up... Mention Ting Lu. This oh. could be where we see him if they anticipate that we're anticipating the Drip Limb switch. This is a fascinating turn. Okay. And we do see the Ting Lu. Yep. Now, that, I think that's a really, really solid play on the opponent's part. No need to I mess around so with the predictions. and. I really like this. It's why when I played, I really like to have a lot of bulky offensive teams. You play the beginning of the game, you kind of feel your opponent out. And at this point, we all know how our opponent is playing. Me, you, Ben, he is going to make predictions. He's going to make a lot of switches. And when you have that in your mind, it's easy to get into that Volt switch, the U-turns, you know, get into a Regenerator Pokemon. Just get into a point where hopefully with some momentum, you can make the prediction there. And now, hopefully, make some good progress. Now, the spikes are a little worrying because we do not have an ability to get rid of them. Dragon Tail, best way to get that thing out of here so we can have the right matchup. But now, now we're in a uh, an interesting spot, Tyler. Not ideal would be the way no. that I phrase it after what just happened. And again, after what we saw... The last turn, obviously Drift Blim wasn't out there. Ben anticipated the switch into Drift Blim, went for the Stone Edge instead of the Stealth Rock. Mm. Does he stay in here this time, go for Stealth Rock? Does he stay in, make the aggressive play with the Stone Edge? Do we predict another switch? Again, things are getting kind of dicey. I think this, these were a good couple of turns to give credit on the other side to Chimpak to yeah. kind of level things back out because it feels much more even now. No, it absolutely does. And... 
You know, heavy duty boots has really changed how important stealth rocks are. It used to yeah. be the best move in the game by a significant margin, at least on the single side of things. But now, whoo, don't like any of that. Do not like any of that. But now, <laughs> there is reason to suspect that, you know, the uh, Hisuian Arcanine, the Tornadus T, well, at this point it's gone. But those Pokemon having heavy duty boots that the, oh, okay, that the stealth rocks wouldn't have done anything. No. With the shat or the Shadow Ball special defense drop, we were not going to live anything there. I don't actually know if it mattered. I, I feel like Air Slash would have killed regardless mm -hmm. from how much health we were at. But Triplum is Triplum is becoming a, a very frustrating Pokemon to go against. I am very curious of what set is this. We still haven't seen much. Right no. now, we just know it's dealing a ton of damage with Shadow Ball. Yeah, I mean, it could still be, like, Unburden, yeah, you know, yeah, and then the Special. Too, which is a lot of Pokemon, you need to figure out their moves. <sighs> we still don't know the ability. No, no, and I mean, it, it well, is... Well, I mean, we're, we're pretty sure there's no Flame Orb. I think we can rule that out. Yep. So, in Unburden would... I mean, we're, we're probably right with that. Yeah. But even still, we know one move. Yeah. <laughs> That's all air the slash. Yeah, and air slash. So we know two moves, both attacks. We don't know what else it's holding behind. Yeah. Against a Pokemon that already we really weren't too sure we were going to see in this battle. Yeah, I... Which to me, that's what makes Draft League fun. Yes. When you've got 10 or 11 on your roster, an opponent's banking on your top 6 or 7, maybe top 8. You throw in that last one, and that's like, well, well all right, don't know what to do against this. The thing that's really, really throwing me off is the the Drift Blim is, you know, it's coming in, doing damage and switching out. And, you know, if it was an Unburdened Sweeper, I, you know, I don't think that's how you play with it. It's just, I I don't think I've seen someone use Drift Blim like this so effectively. It's really impressive. But we got a little, uh, we got a little pony on our side that is one of my favorites. Now, unfortunately, it's getting switched out, as I say that, to, to bring yeah, in Defensive not, Garchomp. Not, not the best matchup. No, but this is why defensive guard jobs here. You know, in, in big yep. part, it is for the Arcanine, but we've already seen Ting Lu comes in every single time easily on Garchomp and can get more spikes up, or it can allow the opponent to bring in Drift Blim. I really, really, really do not like Garchomp right now on the team. I mean, it definitely fills a role that is important, mm -hmm. but I mean. Well, and the thing that we did not anticipate that really lost a lot of value for Garchomp was Iron Hands being brought, or not being yeah. brought. Uh, no Iron Hands, not that it makes Garchomp useless, but it's a great counter to have against Iron Hands. And a lot of that's out the window, especially now when we're staring into so many Ting Lu switches. That's going to be the switch in almost any situation on the other side, is just bring in Ting Lu. It's bulky. It's got amazing defense with its ability. It gets, by default, great special defense. I think the bigger thing, actually, with the Garchomp is just the fact that our opponent is so ready to switch so frequently, you know? Yep. And and if we have a Pokemon that is obviously meant to take hits, whether it be an Amoongus or a Garchomp, it's so easy pr to predict that. And I, it really puts Ben in a really uncomfy spot. But I really, really love that Dragon Tail. You know, the Dragon Tail is a fantastic addition to this set. Very important because we don't have a way to get rid of hazards. I love having the, the Garchomp in on the car here. But now Ben's got to make a big play. I think the biggest possible play is Earthquaking, expecting our opponent for the first time not to make a switch, making a crazy play. I don't expect that to happen, though. It'd be cool. So since that's probably not happening, we need to make the right switch knowing the opponent is going to switch or make oh, the aggressive okay. play. Yes! Come on. Yes! Let's go. Let's go. Okay. That's we'll take what the kill. Oh, That's what I was saying. At some point when you play against someone who's switching, 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 their biggest prediction will actually be to not switch. Expecting you to be so ready for the switch is that you switch. So if you can go from the prediction to the prediction yeah. to the prediction to the prediction to stay in an earthquake there, you're in such a good spot. But I got to give the bad news, Tyler. Yeah, he didn't care if he lost that thing. He just wanted so to get talked to and here's what I, I'm, I'm looking at it now as you were running through that. Yeah. Speed-wise, we had good investment on Garchomp. Not mm -hmm. maximum speed investment, but pretty good. 
Right. Base speed wise, we're looking at 102 for yep. Dark Knop. Rev of Room has a base speed of 90. And I think with max investment, I still don't know if it naturally outspeed. We were talking before the battle. I think it's kind of ironic this comes back up about Choice Scarf and yep. how rare it is. Wondering if that was a Scarf. I think it was Scarf. Toxic yeah. Spikes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we don't... Ben hasn't brought a lot of Choice Scarf. I feel like we haven't seen as much Choice Scarf. It is interesting after that conversation to see Choice Scarf Toxic Spikes. But it really could be why we lose this game. That was a fan yeah. fantastic. And I think that's why in bring. that case, they're willing to accept it because yep. at this point in the match, Rev of Room does not offer much yep. um, outside of switching in against anybody but Garchomp. Mm -hmm. And with how prevalent Garchomp has been, just saying, hey, if I get the Toxic Spikes up, I'm content. I, that's a good sacrifice. I, Ben's got an Earthquake here, I think. I, this, we can still win this game. I think you got to start getting damage on the opponent. We still have things that outspeed the team. We're in a really, really tough spot with Hazards. I want to get damage on Ting Lu here. I mean, getting Stealth Rocks up, I mean, I this could this is also damage, of course. Yes. But I really want to weaken this thing. Hoping that doesn't have boots is the, is the big thing there. I would. I don't think it would. I'm really I'm really sure it's going to be some sort of unburden. Which yes, I, be... I'm with you. And I think Ben's on the same page. Did he go for Stone Edge here? He went Earthquake. Okay, okay. All right. All right. That's why I ask. That's why it's, it's two of us for a reason. <laughs> no, he All went right. Earthquake. Stone Edge would have been very bold, purely anticipating the Drift Blim, which last time How only did pay off because been? it switched into Team How Lou. How would it have been? It would have been cool. It would have been really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. But we do see the Rocks damage there. Yeah, I... Those you know, two in combination yeah. would have been awesome. But I get it. It's that would have been a huge risk. It's easy for me to say, you know, Stone Edge because, hey, my my butt's not on the line. I'm watching and commentating. And, you know, if you mess up that play, that, I mean, I don't think it would have been the end. It would have been the end of Garchomp. It would have been the end of our chances. But, you know, it sets us back a Pokemon, of course. That would have been incredible, of course. But at this point... And we have priority, right? We still got Bullet Punch. I is, mean... Is he going for Earthquake here? Anticipating either a switch or... Now, here's the other thing. Drift Blim is Terra Captain. No, he was predicting a switch. He, he was he's, predicting switch. He's in his head now. He's... It's... It's difficult, right? When when you're on the back foot and yeah. someone's like they are predicting your moves, it it gets really difficult to then catch back up to that, right? And yeah. because we have their the, our opponent has the hazards up now, they can start just making that that easy play. With Driftblim, the worst thing about going against it is there's so much fear of what set it's actually going to be. That's right. very clearly where we've gotten stuck. But I don't know what the next play really is to deal with it. You know, we had one, two chances to Stone Edge there. One of them, uh, way too bold. Don't blame him for not going for that. The second one, like it, it, at one point there had to be a little, or it was no boldness than boldness. You know, at yeah. some point. <sighs> it went from zero to a hundred real quick. Yeah, I, I, it would have been nice to pick the same strategy twice in a row. This is our... We have two hits with this. We got to make the right prediction here. I mean, Ben's got it in him to nail this play. He has got to make the perfect prediction here. And the perfect prediction could straight up just be Thunderbolt. We've been in this spot before. Uh, I, I think the last turn, if nothing else, even if this turns into a, a Ting Lu switch, uh, I don't think you're you're too upset if you Thunderbolt into that. I, I think just based off the last turn and really trying to gamble on that prediction, you got to make the aggressive play here. It, it, it gives an easy switch into Ting Lu, which is fine, because then you can follow that up and at least get a massive hit on the way out with Leafstorm if they keep the Ting Lu in. Yeah. No, I, I fully agree with you. I now, think it this could is... really sting if they go right back to Drift Blim here. Yeah. <laughs> and we go with the Leaf Storm. So all of a sudden, this right here is a really huge turn. That can tell us a lot about how this battle is going to play out. Well, but there is the Stealth Rocks up now. And yeah, regardless... So I, don't, I don't think they want to bring Drift Blim in on that. 
there's been way too much fear with the drift bloom I, I feel and you know i will have to ask the coach after the game of why the no stone edges you know may, maybe it's what i'm throwing out there maybe i've missed something very possible but at this point and we're not you bring in drift bloom you're not popping the weakness policy that's what it has with a leaf storm it's taken the the stealth rock damage drift bloom has been a freaking monster so this is absolutely the right play this almost kills Tang Lu, which is wonderful. And this puts us in a fantastic spot to hopefully still potentially clean up with Iron Valley and, and Tyler. Maybe, just maybe, not having choice specs will actually allow us to win because we can move our change our moves around. Maybe that's it's, a really good point. Maybe it comes all the way back. And the choice scarf is gone on the other side. Tornadus T is gone on the other side. The only thing that has speed is, is the Ogre Pond still around? We saw that a bunch in the beginning. Yeah, it hasn't been out since then, but it, it, now we got it down low. I don't know if we got it low enough to kill it with rocks, but either way, it would be down after one hit. Yeah, I, I mean, Iron Valiant could clean up. We have our offense left. You know, yes. this has not been my favorite battle like that. We've watched Ben play. I don't think it's been his best match by any way, you know, stretch or form, but we you know, spent this the is... first like eight turns utterly confused as to what was going on. Right. Yeah. I need to get to the good before, before he's watching this and he's upset, but <laughs> this is the beauty of what Ben does. He built a fantastic team. You know, I think the, the only truly, you know, tough battles I've ever watched for Ben is when he gets away from his strategy, gets too rattled. He has yeah. not gotten rattled. He's stuck to his plan. He's stuck to his best Pokemon. Our Three Pokemon left are all offensive. They give us a very real chance to win. We have a heavy duty boots Pokemon that's not gonna get hit by hazards. We have a Pokemon that outspeeds everything as long as there's not a second scarf. And we have Frankie, which is a very offensive Pokemon. You know, there's been a few miscues, but this team is still in a really good chance to win. And that's all that matters. That's all that matters at the end of the day. We have not made as many correct predictions as our opponent has, but that doesn't matter if we can nail the plays right now, and it starts right there, Tyler. That's one. That was massive. Now, you got to assume with Metagross on the field, we've seen the switch be the Drift Blimp. Yep. They bring that in. We know what the rocks do. Yep. Things can turn here. No, they absolutely can. Now, I mean, Drift Blimp does have some pretty frustrating sets if i try to get back into my you know my mental database i feel like at you know at some points like unburden could be a berry that heals it up a little bit i mean i guess there is also like destiny bond after the unburden like there's a lot of things this thing can do that are just really frustrating so how we handle this pokemon is so big Ben's you know. got bullet punch if he wants to outspeed and just get some damage. But I know one thing that you'll see oftentimes uh, with Unburden is just having the Citrus Berry on there. Right. Yep. It could be scared of that. I don't know. Do you gamble it? Just try to get that extra damage with the bullet punch to where if you bring something else in. If Ben goes for bullet punch here, it'll do enough damage to Drift Blim. Let's say it doesn't have Citrus Berry. Hmm. To where if they have to take the Drift Blim out, bring it back in, it probably dies to the Stealth Rock. That's, again, super dicey play to make. Does he hold out? Try just to ice punch and see what... If you do ice punch here, you're probably going to die to Shadow Ball. Yep. Unless you're banking on a switch, I don't think they're going to switch here. Bullet punch is the aggressive play. I think otherwise you're probably content letting Metagross go down. Yeah. And that's you what know, we're it, From how Ben played, it feels like there were so many questions and worries with Drift Blim, like the same yeah. ones that we had up here. I... I think Ice Punch was the correct play. I, I would have liked to see the Bullet Punch, but if we're confident Thunderbolt kills, it doesn't really matter at all. I mean, it, it doesn't matter yeah. in the slightest. You take actually, out of the picture. Well, yeah, and I've been thinking more on the weakness policy side. You know, if it is the Citrus Berry side, then Bullet Punch. It, there's just so many questions. Ice yeah. Punch is the correct play, as I, yeah. I did say. You know, maybe I might have thought myself in circles and clicked Bullet Punch that Citrus Berry. <laughs> now I've lost and I'm sad. So it's it's a frustrating Pokemon. But as I said earlier, I wanted to pop that thing, side of the road, run it over a few times. And hopefully we can do that with a little Thunderbolt here. Now, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This was the Terra Captain. Oh, that's one of the bigger reasons I think there was so much questioning, isn't it? Yeah. No, that also makes sense. 
That that is something. Go, yeah. Well, flying fairy. I guess if it went fighting, the then you're not doing as much with the bullet punch. Um, but well, even then, it's not a good defensive Pokemon. You probably still get it to that damage mark, and then but your rocks don't do as much. Just, so many things to account for. I'm glad Ben's doing this. Not a. Oh, it's over. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 It. Yep. All right. Yep. Yep. Was unburdened. Oh, it absolutely is. Yep. Yep. We were wondering what the other moves were. I and don't. Because it's still the ghost type and didn't use up that Terra, we can't vacuum wave. The thing that's really getting me, and it, it's. The Drift Blim was used in so many ways where I feel like we could have taken it down before it got to this spot. No, and I there agree. Was, there was so much fear of what it would do, I, I think, or there. I, I mean, worries of like switching, whatever it may be. There's just so many spots, and to be here, it's we were so close. We were so close yeah. to a victory, and it's it's killing me. I mean, this is not a guaranteed loss at this point, but it's it's brutal. It's brutal. You know, it's brutal, man. We we didn't, you know. Look at Drip Blim and, and uh, like look down on it or think it wouldn't be scary. Ben didn't do the same. There was, we played around it with fear and we like, uh, it's, man, man, man. I think we're just kind of shell shocked right now. I mean, we, we, with all of that said, any situation there, Ben is able to get out of it okay without the endure. That, wait, just what a good set. Wait a minute. Now, this I don't quite get. Yeah. It, it, this I'm, I'm a little perplexed by. <laughs> this, this, could, this could really swing things here. Yeah, I don't... I don't understand. Uh, hold. <laughs> Pause. Uh, just don't... Just, don't flinch. Don't do the, don't do the bad thing. Uh, okay. Another kill for the horse. There we go. Hey, there we go. That's my pat MVP. The stats, pat the stats. Pat the That's stats. my MVP. All right. Uh, um, so, I mean, we, I mean, we have a chance. It's not a good one. But we're not out of it. If if only Chilling Nay tripled our speed, we would really be in this thing. Well, how offensive is this going to be? Right? It's a good question. We don't we don't really know. We haven't seen much of the Hisuian Arcanine. Right? I mean, what if this is a defensive Hisuian Arcanine? I I just I wanted to I wanted to pretend. I knew we had no chance. I just I wanted to it felt good for a little bit. It yeah, felt really it, good for a second. That was a really good that was uh, yeah. You know, it's you lost a goat. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> There's no shame losing against a coach as, as good as our opponent. You know, no, hats no, off to no, him. No. And we said a lot of great things throughout the battle. It's not like we just have to throw that out now. But it, I think what's really killed me with this battle is we lost to Drift Blim. And I think the Pokemon we played around, the, the most, like, we were most timid around Drift Blim. And the only way Drift Blim was going to be that big of an issue is if what happened happened. Now, obviously, it could have done some big damage early into the game anyways. You know, like mid-game, we still were not really ready for a Drift Blim, but Glastro, as we saw, was going to be able to at least live a hit and take it out. So getting that popped early could have swung the tide, but hey, a lot of switches, a lot of predictions, a lot of things happened there. And unfortunately, I think for the first time, uh, we are, well, actually, the first time since week one of our first season, we were losing record. It's not a great feeling, but hey, maybe we needed to be humbled. Maybe this is the last loss we'll have. Let's talk to the coach. Let's see what he's thinking. On to week four. We're a second straight battle. We're joined by our head coach, the Veneral, unfortunately, after a loss. And as John pointed out, as we were wrapping things up on our side, Ben, this is the first time in a really long time that we've been able to say this team has a losing record. And this was a battle we felt pretty good about going into. It looked like two very evenly team matched teams on paper. We liked our strategy. It seemed like we had built out a plan for what we thought we were going to see. Didn't 100% see the team that we thought we were going to on the other side. And it led to a little bit of a weird opening to the battle, at least from our side of things. The first about 
10 turns. We were a little confused, especially with the use of Ogre Pwn on the other side. So walk us through what you were seeing through that opening phase of the battle, all the switches both ways, where it seemed like it took a little while for both of you guys to get going. Yeah, that loss was extremely unfortunate. Going into this battle, I was extremely confident. I thought we had a very favorable matchup. I won all of the mocks that I did. I really thought there was no way I was going to lose this week, but I guess the heavy switching is what got in my head and caused it, you know? Um, so those first few 10 turns, I mean, you tell me, dude. I have no idea what Chimp was doing with that Ogre Pawn and some other stuff. Um, it was some obvious turns where he was trying to get, like, Torn in and things like that, but that Ogre Pawn, I have no idea. Obviously, I Volt Switch turned one and went Iron Valiant just because I was expecting a spike, and if I went into something slower, he could have gotten two free layer spikes that just would have been there up all game. So I was more worried about spikes rather than getting knocked off. I knew I would be taking some damage or losing an item if he didn't click spikes there with Ogre Bonk turn one, but it was worth it, I think, just in case it was spikes. So at the end of the day, I feel like I kind of just got all of his sets wrong, which was really like kind of awkward. Um, a lot of them I very much question, uh, but you know, it, it worked out for him. He built well overall, and I mean, he got in my head at the end of the day, which is all it took to throw me off for a little bit. So I needed to stay a little bit more focused no matter what all the switches were happening. Maybe I should have focused on getting Stealth Rocks up a little sooner because he didn't have any heavy duty boots or anything like that. And I would have been able just to play my game a little bit more and calm down and just focus on what I needed to do, you know? The star of this battle was very obviously Drift Blim, a Pokemon that you don't always see competitively, but when you do see it, there's a lot of different sets it can run and it can be very scary to go against it. But considering this was an Endure set, which you usually want to save to the end of the battle, how much did it mess with your strategy to see Drift Blim used many times in the middle of the battle and stay in in situations where it could have been damaged? Just walk me through your thought process in general with Drift Blim as there are a lot of question marks still in my mind with it. Yeah, John, I uh, respected Driplim as well as I could going into this match and overthought about it a little bit in the game. Driplim something I used in the past and gotten kills with it, so I know its potential, especially with like Calm Mind, Unburden, and then the Strength Staff sets. So I definitely could have played around it a little bit better, but the way Chimp was using it kind of threw me off. Um, he also didn't show it, but his fourth move was Defog, which is very interesting considering he was like an Endure, Unburden, um, potentially Sweeping set, I would have expected it to, you know, be like Strength Stab, so... I mean, I was overthinking every turn when it came to that thing. There was definitely times where I could have just gotten Chip and not try to overpredict the Terra. If I just clicked what was in front of me two times with, like, Stone Edge with Garchomp, I'm pretty sure I won this game 100% of the time, so that's very aggravating there. And even towards the end, I'm pretty sure if I went Glastrier before I went Iron Valiant on the Drift Limb, I would have won 100% of the time. I, I obviously, I wasn't expecting Endure, no surprise there, you could see my reaction, but uh, I, if I just took a second longer, I would have realized that Glastriere was always the win, the right win condition path there. I, that's not even the right wording, but whatever. Uh, because I would have been able to deal with that accordingly, and I only needed Val for the last two. If for some reason Val couldn't pick it off with Drifblim, then I 100% lost always because Glastriere is slower than the remaining mons that he had in the back. So overall, I think the switching got in my head and I was trying to, I guess, over predict too much. It's kind of aggravating because I really wanted that win and walking away with the loss there uh, does, not, does not settle right with me. That's one where I feel like if we were to do that over and over again, I would win like the next five to six in a row. That, that's nothing against Chimp, it's just like I felt like I beat myself more than anything that game. There were still some unfortunate hacks. I would love to see his Torn have done more and not crit it. Obviously, I mean, woo, justice for last week, but I hate seeing any crits like that where it just gets a full kill on a Pokemon. Especially something as strong as that Choice Specs Torn was. So, at the end of the day, Drift was very good. Uh, Chimp had prep that caught me off guard. He p positioned himself in the game to where I didn't know how to bounce back properly. And, I mean, I just kind of snowballed. So, I, I, I'm hoping I get back on it next week. We do have a tough opponent in Uzi, which we did face in our previous season at the GBA. Hoping to take him on and doing our best because he does also have a very scary draft. So, I'll see you all for week four.